Hello, it's Scott Manley here with Eve or Bust, episode 13, lucky for some. If you remember, we left the uh, space station in a highly eccentric orbit. It had remained there since the initial aero capture. Well, now we need to actually go for the recovery. And to do that, we need to make sure that we are in a low circular orbit, ready to rendezvous and pluck our astronauts from space. If you remember, the launch vehicle does not have a cabin of any sort. It has four seats for four Kerbals who will sit inside their spacesuits. We have no other facilities for them and therefore it would be reasonable to presume that they would like to get picked up as quickly as possible. Now if you remember I've talked about the uh, lunar escape system which was an emergency launch vehicle from the moon. It was it had a, a four hour time limit during which the rendezvous and capture would have to be made. So I Anyway, uh, back on the surface, we've got everyone, we've got the space station into a 100 kilometer orbit. Now we need to load this vehicle up. It is time for all the crew who have, of course, done many other things in the meantime. I'm sure they've gone off and done lots of exploring, then found all sorts of fascinating things while I haven't been looking. But they've obviously all returned to the mountaintop so they can get on the EESS. That's the EVE escape system simply something or other. They can all get on board this and prepare for their departure into deep space. Now, if you remember, we have tested this on paper. We're not 100% sure it'll work because we don't know, uh, we don't really fully understand the properties of Eve's atmosphere or gravity or anything. So uh, it's entirely possible these guys will have to be abandoning ship, hopefully with less than a few hundred meters per second of delta V, because if they get into space but can't quite make it, then they still have their RCS packs to save themselves. But we have everyone loaded up, all four of our pilots sitting back to back, no doubt remaining in voice comms, telling stories about the glory days of space travel and all these other things trying to keep each other calm as they're about to do something utterly epic they're going to launch from the planet eve uh, a place which is not known for its ease of departure a place where astronauts of old have got stranded but these ones are gonna leave and they're gonna rendezvous with their space station in orbit so there we are, it's about 900 kilometers, 800 kilometers out. It is a good time to get going. Just do our last minute checks, make sure everybody is here. We have Bob Kerman is here. We have, yep, Gerford. We have Lodlock. And of course we have Jebediah Kerman, who is gonna be commanding this. Uh, we have to switch over navigation to the probe body and now we're ready to go. Watch this in real time. Oh my god, look at this, how painful the time is. Ditching the landing gear. Oh, and we're skewing, we're skewing. No, don't crash, don't crash. Come on, get this going vertical again. Come on, yes, it's coming back. It's coming back. Okay, we're clear. And we'll just actually accept some of that drift. We don't want to be too close to the to the ground vehicles when we ditch these stages. It would be kind of annoying if we managed to drop stages on these vehicles. So we'll just accept that drift. In fact, I'm going to encourage it a little more. I'm not sure how early these first stages are going to drop. The first ones are going to be um, one of these side tanks here. Now you're noticing that we are only using the small Rockamax engines. This was something of a self-challenge I set for myself. It's kind of silly. It'd be probably good to have an aerospike in there somewhere, but I just decided it would be fun to try building this spacecraft using only little engines. And rotating around, watching the landscape for one last time, and ditch the first stage. Okay, so we are actually, yeah, we're high enough up that that will probably not hit the ground. Regardless, you can see it would be falling a significant distance away from our spacecraft. We would not be risking damaging them uh, if we had perhaps dropped it directly over the top of them. 
because, well, the atmosphere would have slowed it down or simply made it evaporate. Okay, this one is the next set to go down. The plumbing is set up such that this is the one that feeds and ditch. Wait, wait, why is it? Oh, there we go. Thank you. I couldn't find the space bar for a moment. Can you believe? Yes, it does actually happen. Okay. So we're continuing upwards now. We're still below 100 meters per second. We are still in the thick of it, so to speak. The thick of it being the atmosphere on EVE. We have to be very careful we don't waste our time fighting the atmosphere too much. So I've cut back thrust just a little, but once we actually get high enough that we see the needle start to register slightly, we will give ourselves, uh, we'll let our speed rise to over 150. But we want to be careful as well that, because the atmosphere scale height is much longer than on curb curbing, therefore we're going to find ourselves that the atmosphere gets thinner less quickly than when we would like. We are still very much in the process of fighting our way up. Remember, EVE has much tougher gravity, but uh, at least it doesn't have some crazy gravity that makes us flip out of control. This thing is nicely stable, and uh, SAS is helping a great deal here. 17 kilometers, and I'm actually now cutting my thrust a little. I want to keep my speed below about 200 until we get into the uh, kind of the next band of the atmosphere, where we're, which will correspond to roughly 10 kilometers on the on Kerbin. We're going to have to get up to about 30 kilometers here before we really start to get into a level of atmosphere where we want to turn to a, a you know, turn to one well, to the east basically to pick up velocity. If we turned the wrong way, we would really be in serious trouble because we do not have enough fuel in that space station to perform a rendezvous anymore. That space station has less than 1.7 kilometers per second or thereabouts of, of fuel left. Uh, thankfully, we're not taking that whole thing home. We are going to actually leave the station behind. So now, okay, we are, we are almost in that band, so the speed has risen a little above 200. 250 is probably okay, but I'm just being very careful here. I really want to make sure I don't waste fuel. The margins on this uh, kind of tight, and uh, it would be unfortunate if we were to leave these guys in a suborbital trajectory with nothing but their EVA packs to save them from certain doom on the EVN atmosphere uh, and surface, really. Atmosphere, they don't care about it because they'll just fall through that. The surface though, it'll have a word with their structural integrity. Ah, uh, okay, now now we're really getting going. The We don't need to worry so much about the uh, staging, but we now need to start worrying about leaning over. We have 31 seconds till we reach Apple Apps, so slowly starting to turn that thing over. Maximum thrust now, we think that we are going to be moving beyond the atmosphere faster than it will be slowing us down. So what are we, 51 seconds, that's a good one. Okay, start to turn that thing over. If we turn over too fast, then our time to Apple apps will start to drop and that will be a sign that we've overcompensated. But I think we're doing just fine. We must be going upwards at over a kilometer per second now. We're really really motoring out here. Now we're onto the final stage. Oh my goodness. Thankfully this thing has plenty of thrust. It does have only... It just only has one Rockamax engine on it, but it has one of the center mount engines, which means better uh, better specific impulse. And now we're trying to figure out... We want to get these orbits as close as possible. If we have them too far apart, then it will take more delta V for us to adjust our inclination. Also, uh, yeah, I guess that, that would be nice closest approach there, but no, we would be not going fast enough. 1700 meters per second. At this point, the the orbit on Kerbin, we would be definitely uh, feeling the centra, centripetal or centrifugal um, acceleration, let's say. It would be helping us get up, but at this point we are still very much on a ballistic arc, more or less. The sideways velocity, the lateral velocity is not enough to provide significant amounts of dwell time. 
130, 140 kilometers. We're going to be going a little higher than usual. It looks like we're going to have plenty of fuel, though. I am, I am confident that we are going to be able to get this thing to orbit. 150 kilometers. I, I think I'm going to have to cut thrust. Yeah, let's do that. So we'll just do maneuver node now and set ourselves into orbit. And then we'll try and figure out the rendezvous next. There we go. Just tweak this. 92! Um, is that above the atmosphere? I don't remember where the atmosphere ends on EVE. I should have took notes. Look at these guys. They are in space. Let's take a look at them. Hey, who's that, do you think? Yeah, that's Jebediah. Go figure. And that he's not happy. No. And he's pretty happy. That means he can't be Bob. Uh, only thing is, I guess, the solar panels are on the wrong side of the vehicle right now, and I am running out of electric charge very slowly. But I think I will get through this burn. Once I'm through this burn, I will be able to turn the vehicle around and um, recharge the solar cells. There we go! Okay. Come on. Yes, 100%. We are in orbit. We have made it into orbit. We have escaped Eve. Now we just need to figure out this whole rendezvous situation with my uh, friends on that spacecraft. And there will be lots and lots of pushing and pulling of maneuver nodes. I guess the first thing I'm going to do is use the small amount of fuel I have left to uh, adjust the inclination of these two orbits. Yes, once we have corrected our inclination, it will just be a matter of synchronizing our orbits. And we're actually rather close. We're within 100 kilometers. So I'm dropping out from my, uh, the space station with the return vehicle. The return vehicle has a larger fuel tank that it will be taking home, but we're not going to be bringing that on this trip here. We're just going to perform a small um, prograde burn so that our orbits synchronize. It is but like 8.2 meters per second. We could probably do it with the other one, but uh, with the with the, the launch vehicle, but I kind of, I'm just going to do most of the maneuvering with this thing. I want to leave a little bit of fuel in the launch vehicle so I can deorbit it in the end and be all nice and clean. So what we did by, uh, you know, by firing that, it put us into a slightly higher orbit and now we're coming back down. We're more or less going to fly by the this rover mission at a... Uh, about 2.5 kilometers. So I'm just going to adjust my approach and this will probably take me about, uh, you know, 30, 40 meters per second of adjusting to just keep it flying towards the target. The problem isn't so much that, uh, that I'm bad at getting them on target. The problem is that my trajectory is curving and this instrument really doesn't give me any feedback. The, the flight engineer, for some reason, it, the flight engineer thing probably needs updated because every time I click on the rendezvous tab, it just goes blank. Um, which would be, it could actually be useful in this case. It would be nice to know that uh, I was getting closer or further, further away from my target. In fact, I don't know why I have my flight engineer display up right now because all it is showing is altitude and surface details and stuff that I have no care for. This is, sometimes you notice these things when you're talking after the fact. Unfortunately, this is one of these things that took a really lot of you know, faffing around and sure, I could record this and try to fill it in with stories of space rocks or something like that. But honestly, I, I think at this point, you just want to see me finish up this EVE mission so I can get on and do other things such as, um, I don't know, building giant robots or something. I, I don't know where I'm going next with this. So at this we're coming in very gently here let's take a look from the interior look at these guys hey eh? hanging out there we're just going to use the rcs system for final braking we don't want to pile into them either that would be really unfortunate no nope, that's us we have successfully rendezvoused and now it is down to the magic of the kerbal eva packs we shall send the pilots out in reverse order of experience that means gurford kerman who uh spent most of his time sitting in the back of the mobile lab he gets to go and fly across first because uh he is probably the most out of his element 
He's been crushed under Evian gravity for the last, you know, 20, 30 days or so. I don't know how long time. So he uh, is probably not adjusting as well as the others to zero G. Now we have Lodlock. Lodlock making the walk across the gap between the spacecraft. Just trying to get synced up with that door there and there it is these guys are all gonna sit in this crew storage area this is the one on the bottom where uh, four of the crew will go this small spacecraft will take seven crew all the way back to the planet Kerbin ultimately it will be a tight squeeze but it will hopefully not be more than 50 days or so uh, <laughs> they perhaps will have to spend more time waiting in orbit for the orbits to synchronize but we have a whole space station they can live in for now and uh you know, that space station, no doubt, comes equipped with all sorts of fascinating things to keep Kerbals interested and not turn them into, you know, crazy death-worshipping cultists who kill each other and destroy humans' hope of reigniting the sun. Uh, what are humans? No, no, Kerbins. And, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's have some nice pictures of... Let's get some nice pictures of Jebediah outside the spacecraft. Let's adjust things around come on Jeb say bye to the spacecraft that took you all the way up okay let's uh, try and find let's try and get in close gotta try and click click just pushing the buttons this is fine control doesn't appear to work too well for the Kerbins I don't even know if it does at all what I want to do is just rotate the spacecraft so I can see him through the window. Ah, that's mostly good. Where's the window? There, it, the window is up there. Okay. I think once I get him settled, I'll rotate the spacecraft. And that's good. Okay. Okay, now we want to rotate so that we can see him through the window. And that'll be that way. Excellent. There is the window. There is Jebediah hanging out in space, looking like a pro. Um, nope. Where's the, where's the button? See the VV. Hey, hey, excellent. I totally got it right. Huh? Bill is, or Bob is not happy, is he? He's not happy at all, is he? No. Why? Are you guys freaking out because Jebediah's out there? That's Jebediah. It's your friend. It's not like some alien hanging out there. No. Nope. Oh, but you're enjoying things. I dub thee little Jebediah. You are truly an example to Kerbins everywhere. Yes, well, we shall return Jebediah to the spacecraft. We have successfully launched from EVE. We have proven that uh, our design works. We shall, uh, of course, in the next episode, we shall finally return to Kerbin and make sure this thing works. But until then... I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.